Hello, hello, hello. This is Nicholas, and I'm doing a video on the extreme value theorem, and then I'm going to work through two examples. And the extreme value theorem here for multivariable calculus is very similar to the extreme value theorem that you've used in uh, like Calc 1 uh, when you were doing single variable functions and you were finding absolute maximums or minimums along uh, some interval of that function. And so if you remember from Calc 1, what you did to find that absolute maximum or minimum, right? You uh, you took f prime of x, you set it equal to zero. You found all the points where that was the case, all the x values that satisfied that. And then what you did is you checked the functional value at like you called those the x values being the critical points, right? And then you plugged in your critical points and then you uh, recorded your functional value at each of those critical points, and you also tested the boundary of your interval. So like if you were testing, find, finding the absolute maximums and minimums of f along, say, the interval from 0 to 4, you would also test f of 0 and f of 4. Uh, the same idea is true with the multivariable extreme value theorem. Um, and so that's the general process that we're going to do. So the extreme value theorem says that if we have a, a function with two independent variables, so it's a surface, f of x, y equals z, and it's continuous on the closed and bounded interval d, or the closed and bounded set d, which is a subset of, of R2 of two of, of two-dimensional space, in other words, a plane. So uh, closed being that it's an interval including its endpoints, and bounded being that it takes up some finite portion of R2, of the plane, uh, that it's not the entirety of the plane itself. Um, then uh, this function is going to attain an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum on D, right? It has to. Uh, if we're considering just some interval, every interval is going to have a maximum or a minimum if we're assuming continuity. Um, and then... Uh, moreover, these extreme points uh, are going to be either critical points, so where uh, you're not just taking one derivative, but you're solving for where uh, f of x, y, where the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y simultaneously equal zero, or, so that's a critical point, or on the boundary of uh, whatever subset of R2 you're testing. So uh, let's actually work through a, maybe one or two of these examples. They can get kind of long. Um, so let's consider f of x, y to be 4x squared y minus x squared y squared minus x, y cubed. Uh, the first thing we need to do actually is find the partials with respect to x and y. So with respect to x, that gives us an 8x, y minus 2x, y squared minus y cubed. And that's going to be equal to zero. And then f sub y, that's going to be 4x squared minus 2x squared y uh, minus 3xy squared. And that's also going to simultaneously be equal to zero. So let's call this equation one and let's call this equation two because I'm going to be referring to them later. Um, so what do I notice? What do I notice? I notice that in equation one, uh, everything has a factor of y in it. So we can get at least one case for this kind of yucky looking uh, system of equations. So we know that from one, that y times 8x minus 2xy minus y squared is equal to zero. And so the first case that we can get is that y is equal to zero. Since we've already used equation 1 to derive that y could be equal to 0, we have to plug that into case 2. When we plug that into, or equation 2, when we plug that into equation 2, uh, we would just get 4x squared, right? Because this is 0, that goes to 0, because it has a factor of y in it. Uh, we just get 4x squared equals 0. Oops. And so therefore, x would be equal to 0. So if y equals 0, that implies that x equals 0. We were already going to check that point anyway, though, because... Oh, I never... <laughs> <laughs> Let me actually say the boundary that we're considering. Well, I didn't really lose anything by just going right into the math. Well, let me actually tell you what the boundary is. Um, our boundary D is going to be closed under the region uh, 
it's going to be a triangular region uh, with the vertices uh, at 0, 0, 0, 6, and 6, 0. Uh, so you can actually solve this systems of equation first before you actually go on to the boundary part of it. Uh, but I guess uh, now I'll actually graph this boundary for you. So it's a triangle, right? So we have 0, 0, we have 6, 0, and then we have 0, 6. So that gives us this triangle right here. And that's going to be the boundary. Uh, like you could think of it as like the shadow on the xy plane of the function uh, of the surface of the function z equals f of xy that we would get. You know, imagine if you were to uh, somehow like create a three, like a physical 3D copy of this function that you could like hold and you would shine a light down on it uh, and you'd look like from a bird's eye view. Uh, then the bird's eye view that you'd get is this triangle right here. Um, okay, so now we have y equals 0, x equals 0. Now the other case, the other case is when all that equals 0. So 8x minus 2xy minus y squared equals 0. Um, so I think what I want to do there, I notice that that's a quadratic in terms of y. So I guess technically I could find y in terms of x from the quadratic formula, but that seems kind of yucky. Uh, so sometimes you kind of need some ingenuity here. So I think what I'm going to do, is I'm going to make 8x minus 2xy equal to y squared, because when I do that, then what I can do, see, I get this from equation one. So now I can plug this y squared into that y squared from equation two, and then I will get a, a bunch of kind of yucky stuff here. But uh, so, um, what I can make I can make it four x squared minus two x squared y, uh, minus three x times eight x minus two x y. So that's me plugging in for y squared there. And that's going to be equal to zero. So doing some simplification, uh, you would end up getting that 4x squared times negative 5 plus y equals zero. And then from there, what we can say is once again, 4x squared equals zero. That means x could be equal to zero. And then we got that condition from equation two. So if we plug x equals 0 into equation 1, into equation 1 right here, we would get that negative y cubed equals 0, and then so therefore y equals 0 as well. So that tells us nothing new. Uh, or we would have that y it could be equal to 5. So when we get y equals 5, uh, that would imply, so what we would do there is we would plug that back in we we'll plug that back into uh right let me draw it with a laser y equals five would plug that right back into here into equation one um and then you're going to get a uh or i'm sorry you plug that into into equation two because that's where we got this from, was from equation two. So you plug this back into equation two here, um, and then you'll get a quadratic just in terms of x. So you could then use the quadratic formula to find the values of x. Uh, and so you turn out to get negative 25 over two. Uh, or I'm, I said it right for the first time, I'm sorry. The y, you plug it in into right here into this equation one since you got it from equation two, so you need to use the other equation. And you only get one value for x, uh, and that one value for x comes from equation one because in equation one you would uh, plug in y equals five, and then you'd have only uh, x of degree one right there, and so then you would just get one uh, solution for x, which would be negative 25 over two when you do the math. Uh, so we have two critical points here so far. Um, 
on the interior of our region, and those are y equals 5, x equals uh, negative 25 over 2, and then we have x equals 0, y equals 0. And we got that one twice, actually. Uh, so now notice we have to actually check if these are in our region. Uh, 0, 0 is technically on the boundary, so we were going to check that anyways. Uh, y equals 5 and x equals negative 25 over 2. That's like way over here somewhere, so that's definitely not within our region D. So, so um, we can just ignore that entirely. Um, now we need to check the border. So let's call, it's got, it's the border is made up of three different sides, three different curves. You could say, so I'll call it curve one, curve two, curve three, and we're going to check these individually. So curve one, we have y equals zero, and then x runs from uh, zero to six. Um, so basically we'd have a situation where we have f of x comma zero along c sub one. Um, and that's obviously going to be equal to zero because uh, every uh, term in our original function has a factor of y. So when we multiply by zero, the whole thing becomes zero. And we can just reduce this to a single variable function because our y variable is being held constant. So it's like we're getting like a cross section. So f of x would be equal to zero, and that means f prime of x would be equal to zero. And so that means that every point, I'll draw it in red, every point along c sub one is a critical point. And so we would just kind of keep that in the back of our minds for now. Um, so now we have curve sub two, that's y equals negative x plus six. That's this curve right here, uh, or what's really a line, uh, negative x plus six and x is still ranging from 0 to 6. x is an element of the closed set 0 to 6. So uh, when we have f of x comma negative x plus 6, because that is what y is, uh, we're going to get a bunch of algebra here. We're going to get 4x squared. Um, I don't remember. 4x squared. I'm plugging into our original function here. So 4x squared times negative x plus 6 minus uh, x squared times negative x plus 6 squared minus x times negative x plus 6 cubed. And I've already gone through the algebra, so I'll just tell you that this ends up simplifying to negative 10 x cubed plus 96 x squared minus 216 x. And so therefore, when we take the derivative of x comma negative x plus six, we get a negative 30 x squared plus 192 x minus 216. And we're gonna set that equal to zero because we want critical points along the boundary. Uh, so this is just a quadratic uh, in terms of x, so we can solve it with the uh, quadratic formula. It turns out that when you use the quadratic formula, and again, I've done the algebra, you can go through and verify if you want, we get x equals two-fifths times eight plus or minus the square root of 19. And you can also verify for yourself that these x values um, are uh, between zero and six. Uh, so both of these x values are somewhere between zero and six, uh, two-fifths times eight plus or minus the square root of 19. And it also turns out that the y values so uh, I'll just write like this. And so it also turns out that the y values, or in other words, 6 minus x, because 6 minus x, or negative x plus 6, is y. So if you were to take 6 and subtract it from either of those numbers, you would also still find that that number is still between 0 and 6. And so both of these... Um, both of these uh, points here are uh, valid critical points that lie on this curve C sub 2. And so we'll say that they lie more or less like right here and right here. Okay, so now we just have curve sub 3 to check. And curve sub 3 we, is the curve x equals 0. And y is ranging from 0 to 6 instead. So we would have f of... 0 comma y because x is 0. Um, and if I remember right, every yeah, every term in this function has a factor of x in it. So 
uh, that's always going to be equal to zero. Again, uh, this collapses to just a single variable function because uh, our x variable is held constant at zero. So we can just write f of y equals zero. And that means f prime of y equals zero as well. And so that means that every point along curve sub three is a critical point. So everything in red here in this region is a critical point. Um, now, uh, we just need to kind of make a table here to sum up what we found. So I'm going to put that right here. So we have our important points, points that we have found are critical points and those on the, on the boundary. So what's in red before? Uh, the functional value of those important points, and then their status. So whether they're an absolute max or an absolute min or neither. So uh, we first have an infinite amount of points of the form uh, x comma zero uh, for uh, x ranging between zero and six. So that's coming from curve sub one. Um, and then we have from curve sub three, the point zero comma y, where y ranges from zero to six. And then we have the two points on curve sub two that we found. Um, and so those points are, uh, see if I can squeeze them in two fifths, eight minus square root 19, comma. And now it turns out that when you plug, uh, say, x equals 2 fifths, 8 minus square root 19 into um, this original function here. Uh, this is our x value here that we're plugging in into this original function here. Um, then you're going to get a y value um, because, you, you well, you'd have a factor of y in everything. So you could get rid of it because we've already considered the case where y equals 0. And so then you'd get a quadratic in terms of y. You could then solve that for y, and then you'd get two uh, values that would uh, correspond to the y value of this uh, of this blue point right, or I'm sorry, of the red point here and of the red point here. We have the x value of the red point here, and here we just need their y values. So we plug uh, the x coordinate into uh, this original function here, and then solve it for y. And it turns out that when you solve it for y using the quadratic formula after you divide by a factor of y, since we've already considered the case where y equals 0, you get um, 2 fifths times 7 plus the square root of 19. And so you could probably guess that the other point then would be 2 fifths 8 plus the square root of 19, right? That's our other x coordinate. And then 2 fifths times basically the, the conjugate of what's inside there, so 7 minus the square root of 19. And so those are our uh, four uh, classes of important, important points we need to check. Um, now notice that f of x, y, uh, we've already determined for the first two that it's 0 and 0 because uh, every term in the original function had a factor of both x and y, so if you set either equal to 0, the whole thing becomes 0. And now when you plug in these kind of yucky points, for the first one, it turns out you get approximately negative 141. And for the second one, it turns out you get approximately 70. So uh, what this means is that this point here that I've underlined is a absolute min on the interval because it's the lowest point. Uh, gives us the low, lowest functional value. And then this point here, is an absolute max along, uh, I'm sorry, I said interval, along this region D, which is a subset of the plane. Uh, so, and then these two points here uh, could, are kind of like neither points. We don't really know, neither. Uh, we don't know whether they're uh, just any old point, whether there may be a local max or a local min. Uh, we would need to use the second derivative test to determine that, but uh, they're not an absolute max or an absolute min, so we're just going to kind of ignore them for now because the, that's what the extreme value theorem is only concerned about is extreme values, not local uh, values. Okay, um, maybe one more example here, if I can fit it in before the Lagrange multipliers. Uh, let's consider, let me draw a 
Uh, so let's consider f of x, y to be 2x cubed plus y to the fourth. And I'll say the region first this time. So our region D is going to be defined as, and I'll sometimes write it like this, the set of all points x, y, such that, that's what that a vertical kind of column thing looks like, such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. So in other words, our region D is the unit disk. Uh, so what that looks like, it's just a, it's just a disk with radius one. So it, the disk includes the inside of it along with the circumference. Um, and so first thing we need to do is we need to find where, uh, this stuff actually happens. So we need to find the critical points. So we need to find the partial derivative. So F sub X is six X squared. F sub y is 4y cubed. This is a much easier one because that means, uh, well, we're setting this equal to zero. We're setting this equal to zero. That means that x is equal to zero. And then that means that y is equal to zero. And those are the only, that's the only critical point you can get. The only critical point you can get is zero comma zero there. Uh, and that's not on the boundary. So we were not going to check that anyways. So that's something new. So I'll put it in red right here. That's our critical point. Um, now we need to actually check along the boundary of this uh, function here. So on the boundary, we have basically just the circumference of the unit disk. So the equation x squared plus y squared equals one uh, gives us that circumference along the unit disk. And then the less than or equal to gives us what's actually inside the circumference as well. So uh, this means that y squared is equal to one minus x squared. Uh, because why, why am I doing that? Well, I'm doing that because I have this y to the fourth right here. And so I can actually just collapse f of x, y to just a single function in terms of a single variable function, uh, just in terms of x, because when I square y squared, so in other words, when I get y to the fourth, that is going to be x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. And so then I can plug that y to the fourth back into here and so i would get uh that f of x just f of x along the boundary is uh given by 2x cubed plus now i'm going to plug in my definition for y to the fourth x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus one so now that means that uh f prime of x is uh, 6x squared plus 4, 4x cubed minus 4x, which is 2x times 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. So now uh, we can do a little bit of factoring there. Uh, so 2x times 2x minus 1 times x plus 2 equals 0. Um, so now we get uh, three different things for x. We get x equals 0, x equals a half, and x equals negative 2. Uh, realize, though, that x equals negative 2, no matter the value of y, will be outside of the unit disk. So we can ignore that one entirely. Um, when we get x equals 0, uh, well, we already uh, gotten one of those. Uh, so when we plug that into our equation uh, on, the, on the boundary here, uh, we get, when, when x equals 0, we get 0 plus y squared equals 1. And so then y is plus or minus 1. Um, and then when we plug in a half, into our equation on the boundary, uh, we get a, a y squared is 3 fourths. And so then y is plus or minus square root 3 over 2. So we get four more points on the boundary that are going to be important points that we'll need to check. Uh, and so those will be, um, well, we have 0, 0. Uh, and then we'll need to check 0, 1, 0, negative 1. Um, We'll need to check one half comma positive root three over two and one half comma negative root three over two.
those are the four points that we'll need to check. So that will be, so if we have zero, one, that'll be here. Zero, negative one, that'll be here. Uh, one half root three over two. That's what, 60 degrees, I think. So I think that's right there. Yeah, and then this is at negative 60 degrees. So that's like right there. And so those are the uh, five points that we'll need to check. So uh, we have a kind of a summary here, important points, the functional value at, the, at those important points, and then their status, whether they're a local or whether they're an absolute maximum, an absolute minimum, or maybe neither. So uh, we have zero, 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 one, zero, negative one, one half, root three, that's a horrible square root, root three over two, and then one half comma negative root three over two. So, uh, okay, so now, um, zero, zero, uh, obviously when we plug into, we're plugging back into this equation, uh, we can't really see it, but this equation right here, this two x cubed plus y to the fourth, we plug zero, zero and we get zero, we plug zero one in, we get one. When we plug uh, that, we get one. And now when you plug one half root three over two, uh, you're gonna get 13 sixteenths. And the same thing for negative root three over two, that's 13 sixteenths there as well. So that means that looking at the lowest of these values, that means that zero, zero is an absolute min. That means that oh, these two points, both of them, are absolute maximum. Or, or yeah, absolute maximum. So there's two absolute maximums, and that's fine. Uh, that just means uh, if you were in like single variable calculus, that means you'd have something like that, for example. So where these two humps here are at the same point, that would be two absolute maximums. If you were say along from here to here, from that interval or something like that. So that's perfectly fine. Um, and then these two points right here, the with the root three over two and the negative root three over two are kind of like neither points. Uh, they might be absolute, or they might be local maximums or local minimums, but we would need the second derivative test to actually see if that was the case. Um, so I think this is a pretty, pretty uh, complete rendition of the extreme value. 